Good day, and welcome back to you. Well, guess what I have here? That's right. This is a Hermes rocket. Let's take the lid off, shall we? There it is. Yes, well, if you've been following this channel for a long time, you'll know that at one point I did have a Hermes rocket. It was a 1953 version made in Switzerland, of course. A couple years ago, I gave it away to a young man in California who was expressing an interest in a typewriter. So I've been without a Hermes rocket for a few years, but this Hermes rocket was given to me by a local person, an Albuquerque resident. This was her mother's. And this is a little bit different than the 1953 version that I had before. Obviously newer looking in terms of the styling, but on the rear panel, it says made in England. This is a made in England branded as a Hermes rocket. Let's look at it. Stay tuned. So the manufacturer's label on the back of the machine looks the same as the versions made in Switzerland, except of course, made in England. So the same kind of font or type style of the lettering. So it is definitely made for Hermes intended to be, but we also know that Empire, the British uh, typewriter company, made an aristocrat, which was their clone or their version of a, of a Hermes rocket. So I kind of think this was made by contract by Empire, branded though as a Hermes rocket. We'll start by looking at the features of the machine. So this is with the carriage in the locked position. To unlock it, you flip up the little return lever and then you pull the line spacing less lever forward slightly. Now there is a condition issue we should address here right away, which is You'll notice on the center of the left platen knob, there is a little square shaft with a threaded hole in it. And you'll also notice on the plastic knob, there's a little piece right here. Well, there's supposed to be a sector disc of metal that threads into this square shaft, and it's the line spacing variable. You're supposed to be able to unscrew that disc slightly and unlock the line spacing variable. This machine, it looks like it's missing on that. To lock the carriage of the Hermes rocket, you're going to want to get this little piece right here locked onto the end of the carriage rail right here. You're going to want to push the carriage to the left a little bit, push in the carriage return lever, push your line spacing selector past single line spacing, and you want to do that right where that fitting is over this end of the rail, like that, and push the lever all the way back, the line spacing selector, and then that will lock the carriage right on the end of the rail there. So the line spacing lever is right here. Toward the back is single line spacing, which is two clicks, one, two, of the line spacing ratchet. So that makes this a half line spacing machine. And the next line spacing position is one and a half or three half line clicks. So one or one and a half line spacing is your option there. The paper bale has a little finger protruding above it, uh, out from the front of it on either side with a paper scale, a typing scale on it. The erasing table behind the platen is also scaled. And then there is a little tab right here that's part of the uh, paper table and you can push it forward and it acts kind of like a paper release on the left side. The main paper release that we'll look at in a few minutes is on the right side. The left and right platen knobs, they're rather small in diameter. I find it a little bit irritating to get into turning the left platen knob because you're kind of restricted by the lever here and the paper bale extension here and the line spacing lever here, you, you can only really get at it from one good angle on the left side. It's a little bit easier on the right side, but nevertheless, it's perfectly sufficient. On the back of the machine, we see the margin settings and they're nicely visible from the operator's position up front. They have these little round knurled knobs that you push down and slide, and there's a nice little red indicator for both of them marking where the actual margin is going to be set. And those indicate to the scale that's on the paper table right here. And then uh, there is a release 
switch right here, a little tab that you push that releases the little paper support arm. As you see, it's not a telescoping arm. And on this particular machine, it looks like this arm is slightly bent because it wants to interfere with the left margin setting. So I probably should reform it a little bit like that so it flips up a little easier. On the right side, you have your main paper release lever. This locks the paper release in the released position. But as I indicated earlier, this little round part of the paper table also functions as a paper release, but it does not lock in the release position like the actual releasing lever does. And then on the right side, we have the sole carriage release lever like that. And it's a pretty good position. It's a small little machined extension, but if you grab the right platen knob with two of your fingers, you can operate it pretty easily like that. And of course, the right platen knob. And then uh, another little feature that I find rather interesting is you'll notice the two extensions on the paper bale. The one on the left, the extension goes straight up. The one on the right, it angles a little bit inboard. See that little angle? And this is not bent. I think it's actually machined that way. And I think it's intended to give you a little bit more room on the right side to operate the knob and to operate the carriage release lever, probably with your thumb there. Maybe they figured it was a little more of a ergonomic to make this slightly angled inward. I'm always interested in these little minute details. Some engineer or design person had to figure that out. It's kind of interesting. Well, this is the view of the typewriter from the operator's position. You can see the paper bale flips up like that. You can see the scale on the paper bale, which lines up with the scale on the paper table itself. And then uh, here are the two little gullwing ribbon covers, very indicative of the Hermes rocket style of machine, and they each open up like that. One thing about the Hermes rocket that's always notable to me is it's a pretty good quality ultra portable, but the body panels are very thin sheet metal. You kind of get an indication of that, the way these panels can be flexed a little bit and bent. So you have to kind of be careful with them and not to bend the hinges on either side. So these two little guides right here are the reversing guides for the ribbon. They thread through there. And one of the first things you might notice on this machine is that it is a single color ribbon. There is no bichrome adjustment or setting on this machine, and there's also no touch adjustment. I should also mention that you can manually reverse the ribbon if you need to. It, it should automatically reverse, but if it doesn't, there are these two little extension pieces. The top edge of these are both knurled, and you basically flip one forward and one back, alternating like that to reverse the ribbon. So that's, that's how you can manually reverse the ribbon. It has these two little brackets that are designed to catch the triangular tips of the gullwing ribbon covers like that. Lock them in place, there you go. All right, the keyboard is a standard American keyboard on this particular version. So on the upper left, you have the margin release. On the far upper right, you have the backspace key. And this being an older keyboard, it does not have a number one key, so you have to use the lowercase L. And it has the usual shifted symbols up here for American style keyboards with the slash and question mark down here, the cent and the at symbol here. So very standard layout, shifting, and then your shift lock is here and you can only unlock the shift lock with the left shift key as you would expect with a small portable machine. One of the things I like about collecting typewriters is there's history with the machines and you can see how the paint is worn off. Some people like to totally restore typewriters and make them look brand new or tart them up in gaudy paint jobs, but I really like the history that's represented by wear on a machine. This indicates there was a lot of typing done, wearing out the paint on the space bar, which I think is just an, an interesting indication. Also, on the back of the machine, you can see the scratches for putting the machine back in its case. She kind of slipped the clamshell case down and it probably made a few little scratches removing it and reinstalling it. Just another indication of wear. And here uh, on the left side, uh, to the left of the keyboard, you can see another wear pattern there. I don't know if this was maybe a person's ring 
maybe the, a ring on their hand was hitting here quite often and chipping the paint away, but there is an indication of something going on like that, whereas the right side of the frame next to the keyboard is pretty pristine. So the paper feeds in the machine pretty easily, and it has the typical sound of a Hermes rocket, very similar to my older one. So there's a typical kind of a clicky sound that they tend to make, and that's indicative of this machine also. Due to the age of this, there are a few issues with minor misalignments of the type, and that's kind of just normal for a worn or well-used machine. And, and by indication of the wear patterns on the machine, we do know it was pretty well used. But it, nevertheless, with a fresh ribbon, it prints pretty nicely. There is some uh, shading issues that I probably need to correct on the upper case. And also, it tends to fill in the loops of the letters pretty easily, and that's just mm, the ribbon I'm using is a rather inky ribbon. Yeah, so it does print the whole set of characters pretty well. There are a few that don't print quite as well as the others. And also, I do notice occasionally there is an issue with the uh, the start of the line. The letters aren't quite on the line, and that's something to do with the line spacing ratchet. I probably need to do, do some cleaning and degreasing in there. But uh, overall, it is a very nice ultra-portable typewriter, one of the most uh, recognized ultra-portables. Well, when I first got this machine, I took it apart. You have to take off some of these little screws on the sides and on the back to take the metal shell off. And I noticed the screw heads, they originally came with a light green finish to kind of match the metal paint, but a lot of the paint had been chipped off. It looks like the machine might have been taken apart several times in its history. I was thinking I should probably try to touch up the paint on the screw heads. So there is a nail salon in my neighborhood and uh, a wonderful lady who, <laughs> I, I took a photo of the machine and, and I brought my phone in and she mixed me up a custom color of this light green, but she actually tried to match it more to the color of the keys rather than the paint. So I have applied some of this paint to the screw heads. It's a little bright, right? It doesn't quite match because the actual paint on the metal has gotten dingy over the years and you know, it's not quite as bright as it used to be when it was new. But anyway, that, I thought it was kind of funny. I wanted to share that to you. So yeah, I do have Hermes green nail polish and no, I don't wear it on my fingers or toenails, sorry. But anyways, there you are. Well, of course, the Hermes Rocket is not the only ultra-portable typewriter out on the market, but is one of the most recognized in terms of its size, small diminutive size, and light weight. Having said that, I wanted to present to you guys maybe some other options from my collection. This is not an exhaustive collection of ultra-portable typewriters by any means, but the other two options here are machines that kind of fall into the same category of being very lightweight and small typewriters, but I think for me, I like the way they work a little better. And on your left is the Royal Mercury, made by Silver Seiko in Japan. I've had several of these. They've always been very reliable. They have very good type alignment. They have a bichrome setting, so they offer just a little bit more features than the Hermes Rocket, at least this era does. And then on your far right is the Olympia Splendid 33. The whole Splendid lineup is Splendid. Uh, I don't have a 66 or a 99, but if you have one of those, you'll have a bichrome setting and maybe a touch regulator also. So in terms of features, really the Splendid 33 is pretty comparable to the Rocket in terms of not having bichrome or a touch adjustment, but I think the Splendid lineup is a better typewriter. It has I think a better touch. You could do more serious long form writing with it, I think. Caveat being, it's a little larger and heavier. Both of these are a little heavier than the Rocket and a little bigger. All three of these have 
clamshell cases or plastic sh covers that clamp down on top of the machine with an integral handle. So they're all pretty convenient to carry around. So I think the use case for Hermes Rocket is really about the maximum in portability and lightweight. All the other alternatives are going to be heavier and bigger. That's where the use case for Hermes Rocket comes from, is not as your primary typewriter, but as a lightweight portable machine where you can get some creative work done out in the field away from home, away from your office or whatever. But I would really recommend any of these three as really good solid ultra portable or small portable typewriters. That being said, it's really fun to have a Hermes Rocket back in my collection and I really want to get more use out of it and I think coffee shop typing is probably an area where the Hermes Rocket is really good for. You can carry it by itself or you can put it in a shoulder bag with some paper and other accessories and have yourself a good creative time with your favorite beverage out in public. Well I wish you guys the very best in your creative ventures in this new year. So stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.